We started the Pediatric Rapid Response System back in 2005. Originally, we involved families in the design. We uh, made sure that the calling criteria included if families were concerned. We thought it was really important, um, since they know their children better than anyone else, that they could call for help um, if they really needed it. We didn't have the structure in place for the families to be able to call right away. That took a little while to figure out how you would do that in the hospital. So at first, we just had the staff call on their behalf. Um, we collected that data though and found it interesting that there was a large percentage of calls made on behalf of the families and 70% of those calls, those patients were transferred to the intensive care unit. So that just proved to us that the parents really did know when their children were having problems. And several years later, we actually solidified a system so that parents could call directly and we called it the Family Alert Initiative. The family members can call the same emergency numbers that, that the staff does. Pedi uh, pediatric Rapid Response. An announcement is made overhead and a series of pages are sent out to the team members. It is a system built to be able to respond to a child who's deteriorating in the hospital before they reach the point of a cardiac arrest. The pediatric rapid response team is comprised of the pediatric ICU physician, the pediatric ICU charge nurse, and a pediatric respiratory therapist. And together those three team members will respond to the bedside where the patient's bedside nurse, bedside primary physician, and then the resident um, physician will also be present. Do you have any fever? When we first talked to families about the rapid response system, we let them know that this is a no-blame system, that there's no harm, no foul. If the team comes and everything is okay, by the time that they arrive, then they just move on and go back to the ICU and it's no big deal. He was transferred from the emergency room at another hospital and he had actually started showing signs of improvement. So the plan was they were just gonna kinda watch him throughout the day, but he required more breathing treatments. So he had to stay longer. And then kinda overnight, he just really kinda went down really fast. Logan woke up and his heart rate was over 200 and his respiratory rate was over 40. So we called the nurse to come in to check on him. And um, she actually got one of the doctors and they came in and checked him out. And then the doctor decided to call the rapid response team. Hi, I'm Dr. Hansen with the rapid response team. We walk to a room, um, hear what's going on with the patient, um, either do a few things to help the patient to recover and make an assessment of whether the patient should stay where they are on the floor or whether they should come up to the ICU for ongoing treatment. If you respond to a child or an adult while they're just showing early clinical signs, you can actually stop the progression of their disease process and maybe even prevent them from having a cardiac arrest. That's extremely important because children and adults who have cardiac arrest in the hospital have a very high mortality. The vast majority of them don't make it out of the hospital alive. So if we can prevent a cardiac arrest, we could save a tremendous amount of lives. I was here as a fellow the first year before the rapid response um, team was in place and at that time we had a cardiac arrest on the floor on an average of every 38 days. To put in perspective how what a difference the rapid response team has made, we've recently gone an entire calendar year without having a cardiac arrest on the floor and it's really remarkable how many lives are saved. By